It's a great pleasure to be here, an honor. Um, I know many of you, many of you are part of our community. We're now uh, 3,200 strong and growing. And uh, we, uh, Jim and I sat together uh, just about a year to the day in San Francisco and had, uh, had dinner and talked about kind of what happens after what comes next. Microsoft had just become a participant in the community um, and had exposed its patents as part of its transition to open uh, culturally as well as uh, uh, through implementation and participation in forums like this and, and in obviously in, as a member of the board of the Linux Foundation. And so we saw that as a, as a watershed event, uh, very significant symbolically as well as, 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 as directly in, in actuality. And so talked about kind of where are the other threats, what are the risks, what are the things that can destabilize or, or uh, uh, put the, the confidence that, that has grown over the last 15 to 20 years at such an, to such an acute level uh, where people are collaborating, incorporating code of all types from the open source projects and then feeling confident about their ability to do so without fear of, of litigation. And so that, that nice new norm that's been established over the last dozen years or so, we wanted to make sure that we could reinforce that. And so we talked about how we could collaborate. And one of the things that, that kind of, you know, again, Jim's, I think, comments about GNOME are, are quite accurate. There are, there, are, there are hundreds of companies that are out there. Their per purpose and goal is to aggregate patents for, with a desire to be able to serially litigate. Just to give you a sense, the Rothschild, who's the litigant, uh, the plaintiff in the suit against GNOME, uh, is, has filed 714 suits over the last six years. Uh, this is a bad company. This is an entity that's antithetical to, to, to the goals of innovation and, uh, and doesn't care what's in its path. It will sue foundations. It will sue, obviously, not-for-profits. It will sue individuals. It will sue corporations. And they, the playbook is to be able to establish a pattern of wins uh, through uh, relatively modest settlements. Uh, but uh, you know, I think you should feel comfortable the community, the maturity of the community is really reflected in Neil McGovern and, what, and how he's managing and coordinating with really top flight counsel. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, this would have been a much more of a FUD situation. Now it's just kind of business as usual. The community's maturity, resilience is something that's quite remarkable and I've seen it over the last 11 and a half years of my tenure in, in, in managing and coordinating the activities of OIN. And I think that's a testament to the fact that there is this great legal network of individuals across the world that understand uh, the copyright side and understand the patent side and are driving increasingly toward this new set of norms that Jim referenced. And so uh, what we are looking to do is, and we'll, this is just a kind of an advance notice on something that we've been working on really since that time in, uh, in October of, uh, of 18. What we're looking to do is come together to collaborate uh, along with two very significant uh, companies, operating companies that are active in many, many projects, uh, and to work with those companies and to work with the community to invalidate poor quality patents. Uh, that's really the lifeblood of, uh, of these non-practicing entities. And so what we, will, uh, what we will be announcing in the next several weeks is a program where the LF and OIN are getting together to fund in conjunction with, uh, with support from two very significant operating companies, a program designed to uh, attack poor quality patents and to invalidate them so that they can't be used in the way that Rothschild is using the patents that they own to be able to uh, 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 try and extract rents uh, on, uh, on patents that, are, that actually have very significant amount of prior art. And so uh, the, the, the activities of the GNOME Foundation are laudable. Uh, kudos to Neil and uh, the great counsel that he's brought in from uh, Sherman and Sterling, which is really a Kenyan and Kenyan uh, group that was hired in a couple of years ago. Uh, and we've been providing prior art, doing what we do all the time. We just provided the most recent spate of prior art last week to, uh, to counsel uh, to the Sherman and Sterling people. Things are working as they should in that case, and I think you'll see a good result uh, as they stay the course and proceed with, uh, with the legal, uh, the legal uh, uh, process. 
Uh, and I want to, uh, to basically say that what you're seeing and what I'm talking about now is the pivot of OIN. We focused almost exclusively in the beginning on, not, on practicing entity, operating company risk, uh, patents that essentially were held by operating companies whose behaviors were antagonistic to Linux. There are fewer and fewer of those companies as we, as we move forward in the community and open source becomes more relevant to all companies. Uh, and so now we are pivoting to be able to focus on non-practicing entity risk as well as some residual uh, operating company risk. And so that's part of the nuanced strategy to be able to be more, more, provide more benefit to the community and reduce risk. And so I just wanted to let you know that, uh, that this is something that we take very seriously and the reduction of risk is something that we live, live and breathe on a day in and day out basis. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you today, and I hope that you have a great, uh, great set of days.